Right. Um, I saw an item from Matt Schneiden of The Athletic. I wrote something about it this morning just before the show. It really encapsulates, in my view, what the Packers are thinking. I was told last week they're still not budging. They're still not budging. They're not budging when it comes to Rodgers wanting a trade. And it's very simple. Their calling is bluff. That's kind of what Schneidman is saying. Not kind of. It is what he's saying. They don't believe he's never going to play for them again. So they're not going to trade him. They think when push comes to shove, he's going to show up. And when he says things last week like, I love my teammates, I love my coaches, I love the fans, yeah. that doesn't make the Packers think he's not showing up ever again. So until he can convince them he's not showing up, there's no reason for them to consider a trade, which means this has to play out, Chris. And if I'm the Packers at this point, whatever I get for him is going to be 2022 trade assets anyway. Yeah. Why not let this play out? So what? Okay, he sits out the whole year. We'll trade him after the season when maybe we can get seven or eight teams to the table instead of the Broncos and maybe the Raiders. I mean, no doubt. I mean, yes. If they wait till after the year, yeah, and it's known – and everybody is aware that he's, you know, being shopped, then you're you're right. I mean, there's going to be, you know, a pillage as far as, you know, the people fighting for that and doing that. So that would increase the, the trade market. There's no question about that. And I agree with the Packers. You know, I think this is something we've been saying all along. It's a guy in Aaron Rodgers that's too self-aware. He's too good right now. He's too legacy aware. The team's too good. All of those things point to, like, I just don't think Aaron Rodgers will sit out either. First off, I think it'd be stupid. I mean, you only got one shot at this whole thing. You're coming to the end. Why waste a year right now? Yeah, Green Bay screwed you over. I don't know what else to say. They screwed you over. It was a stupid move and how they handled it and everything. There's no doubt. But I, I, I don't think he'll sit out. I really don't. Now, what I would say to him now is because, like, it has gone too far. If you if he if he asked my opinion, I'd just go, come back, play, be awesome like you were last year, have that chip on your shoulder, whatever it is, and don't be afraid to be make the organization squirmy the whole year. You got no issues with the coaches of the players. Have a press conference. Want to say some things that are derogatory towards the front office and how you're not going to be here and you don't want to ever play for those guys? That'll help get you out of town, too, the way you want to, at least at the end of the year, maybe expedite things as well. Yeah, and look, he could come back and have another fantastic season, causing the Packers to say, well, we're just going to do this all over again, and we'll bring him back in 2022. At some point between now and March, he's got to make it clear. He's got to go. I'm right. done. Right. I'm done. That's right. That's it. That's the only way that he's going to have – the Packers' attention. He's got to convince them. And maybe part of convincing them that he means it after this year is to be, you know, that guy that always has the front office on edge. He as might have to be. Week. Right. Brian Gutekunst, don't get near the practice field. And if you do, <laughs> wear a cup. Wear two cups. <laughs> wear a, a helmet, helmet, too. And other protections. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Don't get near this guy this year. Um, so, uh, highly unlikely the Packers will trade him, but very likely that there's going to be <laughs> some additional drama and intrigue, starting with whether or not he shows up for training camp uh, later this summer, unofficially, which began yesterday.